My name's Danny Clark. I'm a garden designer and TV presenter. And like me, I know you country living guys are very passionate about your gardens. And I'm here today to show you a few tips on how to make your garden more sustainable. So just follow the advice and you will have a beautiful garden that you can be proud of. Hi, my name's Danny Clark. Some of you may know me as a BBC's Instant Gardener. I'm a garden designer and a passionate friend of the earth. And that's the reason I'm here today. I'm here to tell you about Home Base's Great British Green Up. With us all spending a little more time at home, we wanted to inspire you with some easy how-tos that will help your gardens and outside spaces play a vital role in supporting biodiversity in your own local area. No matter the size of your garden, I'm going to talk you through three easy how-tos you can do to keep your space a little bit greener. How-to number one, how to plant with biodiversity in mind. This how-to is about biodiversity. Now, when people talk about gardens and their open spaces, there's a lot of chat about biodiversity. Now, what is biodiversity? As far as I'm concerned, it's about bringing trees, animals and plants together to benefit the environment. So we really need to encourage these creatures into our gardens and there's several ways we can do it. Um, I'm a great lover of hedgehogs, for example. And one of the things we can do is not make our garden so tidy. We tend to keep our borders all nice and neat and symmetrical and well trimmed. But I believe in maybe leaving your garden slightly untidy in certain areas. Maybe leave a pile of logs somewhere that will provide a great home for hedgehogs. Um, the other thing we can do is in that uh, gravel board which protects the fence from the ground, just pull a hole in there so the hedgehogs has got a way through and they can continue on their journey. It's just a small tip, but if we all did a small thing like that, a little thing like that, it would make a fantastic difference to the environment because when you add up all the gardens that are in this country, put them all together, that's one vast expanse of space. Now, we all love birds, don't we? But um, they are under threat at the moment. And one way to save them is to plant as many trees in your outside space as you possibly can. These trees offer shelter as well as food um, and homes for the birds. So let's start planting them. And that way, we're really gonna improve our environment. Now, bees and butterflies. This is something that really is upsetting me at the moment because we are losing them by great numbers, not just in this country, but all around the world. And I've noticed, and I'm to blame sometimes, is that we cut our grass too short. We get that lawnmower out and we cut it to within an inch of its life. And what are we doing? We're cutting the clover out and bees love clover. So leave a untidy part in your lawn, let the grass grow and the bees will love you for it. And the other thing I'll suggest is getting lots of colour into your garden because that also attracts them. It attracts not only the bees, but the butterflies. Now, if I can give you an example of one plant that butterflies would love is the buddleia. So every garden should have one of those. So let's put more colourful and more aromatic plants into our gardens because the butterflies and the bees will absolutely love it. How to, number two, how to make compost. Composting is so easy to do. I love it. It gives me so much satisfaction. And it's great to have that feeling that you're putting something back into the earth and it's gonna make your plants nice and strong and healthy. And it's such an easy, easy thing to do. Now, um, the important thing is to allow some time for it to decompose. It probably takes about six, to 12 months for it to become how you want it to be able to use in the garden. There are do's and don'ts with composting. Now, one of the don'ts is meat. Don't put meat on compost because that will attract vermin. Uh, there are other things I wouldn't use, such as cardboard. It takes a long time to break down. Also the same with grocery magazines. So they are definite don'ts, but definite do's, garden waste. We all have that, don't we, garden waste. I mean, that could consist of leaves, it could consist of grass, it could consist of um, spent flowers, that kind of thing. Now these are very, um, these will de decompose very, very easily. And 
also peelings. So whether it's uh, fruit peelings or vegetable peelings, they decompose very, very quickly. And eventually you will get something that's nice and rich. But having said that, what I would do beforehand, before you get the rich stuff, is to turn your compost occasionally, say once every six to eight weeks. That way you allow lots of light and air into it and will enable it to break down a lot more quickly. And eventually you will get what's called black gold. So you know when your compost is right, because if you squeeze it, it, it holds nice and tight like that. And it's also crumbly. And it smells absolutely wonderful. Nice and earthy. And uh, that's why it's got that great name, Black Gold. How to number three, how to partner with insects in your garden. This how to is about partnering with insects in your garden. There's a number of ways you can encourage bees and bugs into your garden to help biodiversity. Number one is placing an insect house in your garden. In the house is bamboo, wood shavings, wood and acorn in each of the corners. These can be bought or made and make a great playground for bees, butterflies and insects. Number two, planting more diversely to attract bees and birds. Now, when it comes to pulling plants in the garden, a great rule of thumb if you want to attract wildlife is anything that's colourful um, and smelly. And what I mean by smelly, that gives off a really sweet odour, such as this lavender here, which is absolutely wonderful. It doesn't only attract bees, bugs and butterflies, but humans as well. Now, look at this campion. Look at how bright and wonderful that is. Now that's a must for any garden, as far as I'm concerned, and would work well in amongst the grasses if you choose to use them. Now virtually any plant in a garden is going to attract all sorts of wildlife. So my advice is to have as much variety as possible, because if you do that, you're going to get more of a variety of wildlife in your plot. Number three, dig a pond, and I love ponds, and it's a great way to attract wildlife. They will attract all manner of insects, including water boatmen, whirly gigs, dragonflies, damselflies, and frogs. This is a frog. <laughs> they provide a complete oasis for all manner of insects, and the wildlife will thank you for it. Now, you don't have to have a pond this large. If you haven't got a pond, a small dish of water will do the trick and give wildlife a little oasis as they're passing. A healthy garden is buzzing with life. There you have it, three easy ways to green up your garden and increase biodiversity. And all you need to do now is pop into your local home base and get some advice.